good evening and welcome to good evening and welcome to all of you and uh, we are uh, having this uh, uh, program on uh, round table on insurance for all by 2047 this is the vision by the irdai and also the government of india ministry of uh, banking and financial services and uh, we have all the respective speakers and our uh, president uh, anand singhane sahab under his leadership under the banking and insurance council these efforts are being made to cover up some of the very relevant subjects and uh, we have made this program both physical and virtual and uh, that way it will be a recorded and also and posted on the website of the imc so that it will get the benefit for all the stakeholders as i are all aware that the our irdai has been bringing quite a lot of reforms and in the recent changes some uh, far reaching reforms are also being done and uh, quite a lot of relaxation and uh, flexibility has also been done and they are uh, focusing on more on innovation and uh, they have also given the power to the organizations to bring products that on the use and file mode and only inform the regulator and similarly they are also made the quite a lot of increase in the bank what you call corporate uh, level uh, understand what you call collaboration from 3 to 9 and similarly uh, they are also what you call having their own platform for uh, uploading all the products of the various insurance so the whole idea is that uh, from the current level we have to go a long way uh, in uh, having the penetration both in the life and non life and during covid we really felt that uh, the absence of life and non life or all the health particularly and the what you call the life insurance uh, that has costed a lot for everybody so from that onwards the insurance uh, sector has grown uh, very fast and we may be in the 5 to 7 as a percentage of gdp but when we compare the benchmark to the global we have a long way for uh, individual insurance as well as the overall these data and other things will be discussed by the ceo panel and other our respective speakers and also from the pwdc but uh, uh, at the moment uh, we will have the lighting of the lamp uh, by our all of us together and then our uh, president anand singhania will cover and we are very fortunate amongst other speakers we have the presence of saurabh mishra joint secretary to the government of india ministry of finance department of financial services and uh, uh, the, his presence and uh, his uh, experience in this particular area of insurance will be very immense value to all our uh, all of us we look forward for his uh, address after the president's address so let us now proceed to lighting of the lamp sir please come <laughs>
Now I request Mr. Anand Singhania Saab, President of the IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And it has been a very, what you call, a very hectic uh, activities under his leadership. And he has been motivating us to do much more. And we are also likely to have future, he will be telling, uh, annual conference also. With this, I request Anand Singhania Saab to give this address. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Narendra. A very good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this round table on insurance for all by 2047, organized by the IMC Banking, NBFC and Finance Committee. Like they say, Sapka Saad, Sapka Vikas. A very warm welcome and special thanks to Sri Saurabh Mishra ji, who's going to join us online. He's the Joint Secretary to the Government of India, Ministry of Finance, Department of Financial Services for graciously, graciously agreeing to deliver a keynote address at today's round table. And our esteemed panelists, Sri Amit Roy, Partner Insurance and Allied Businesses, PwC. Sri Arvind Daga, Partner and Leader of Accounting Advisory, PwC. Sri Joydeep Roy, India FS Advisory Leader and Global Health Insurance Leader, uh, PwC. Sri Sarbir Singh, Joint Group CEO of Policy Bazaar. Dr. S. Prakash, Managing Director, Star Health and Allied Insurance. Sri R. Sudhakar, Executive Director, Marketing and CMO, Life Insurance Corporation. And Sri Ashwin Parekh, Managing Partner, Ashwin Parekh, Advisory Services, LLP, for sparing their valuable time and being with us here today. The Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India is working on reforms that will lead to the objective of insurance for all, a vision plan to increase insurance penetration and facilitating sustainable growth of the industry. The gross first year life insurance premiums have moved up by about 7% in 2022 to $29 billion. The industry has approximately 60 players with 25 in life and 35 in life non-life insurance. The IRDA is continuously engaging with the stakeholders of the insurance industry in order to set up a reforms agenda for in increasing insurance penetration and facilitating sustainable growth of the industries. These reforms, among others, including promoting ease of doing business by encouraging new insurance players, allowing niche players in insurance, relaxing the renewal norms for intermediaries, product certification by insurers, time-bound approvals, administrative flexibility, fast-track approvals, and facilitating insure tech and the distribution agility. The IDAI also has plans to make the regulations lighter and reduce the compliance burden on the insurers. Additionally, the need for risk-based capital and solvency, convergence to ind AS, rationalization of expenses of management, developing a talent pool, updating investment norms, and sustainable growth of industry were also deliberated. Revamping of the grievance re readdressal mechanisms is also on the insurance regulator's agenda. Though we have 60 players, India still needs a number of new players looking at the burgeoning uh, population that we have with, a, with maybe a new larger variety of products and more distribution partners to achieve the insurance for all goal by 2047. The insurance sector was opened up by more than two decades ago. And although the market has grown bigger, but there's definitely a scope for faster and deeper growth. In the past five years, the sector has grown by 10% each year. Still insurance penetration is at a low figure of 4.2% in 2021. And this obviously needs to be covered much more. India is a diverse nation of 1.4 billion people and just 4% are covered. The, the dictum of one size fits all is per, perhaps not uh, relevant. And we need to generate newer products, unique products that meet the insurance needs of not only the super rich, 
but also people at the poor and the medium, middle class as well. And such unique products cannot be submit, limited, cannot be served by a limited number of players. Therefore, we need a more players, a more wide range of products, and more distribution partners to, the, to achieve the goal of insurance for all by 2047. There is no doubt that today's roundtable will help delegates better understand the recent reforms and initiatives taken by the RDA to boost penetration. In conclusion, I'd like to thank Sri Arjit Basu, chairman of this committee and ex-MD of SBI, Dr. Narendra, co-chair of this committee and former CMD IOB, Sri Anand Pejavar, member of the committee and deputy managing director at SBI General Insurance and our sponsor, SBI General Insurance for this wonderful session. With these few words, I welcome you all to today's roundtable, the topics of which are going to be very thought provoking. And before I conclude, just a little bit about the chamber. Chamber has been established in 1907, is one of the oldest and apex chambers of commerce and trade and industry in the Western region. We have about 5,000 members and about 150 trade associations Together, we have a reach of about 400,000 businesses. We work closely with both the state and center on discussions of policy and for the growth and sustainable growth of the country. Uh, with this, thank you so much and look forward to a wonderful round table. Over to you. Thank you, sir, President uh, Anand Singhane sir. Now we are uh, going to request uh, Saurabh Mishraji. He is the Joint Secretary to the Government of India, Ministry of Finance, Department of Financial Services. He joined the ministry in the 2019, and he is in charge of life, general health insurance, as well as uh, he is also in charge of all the government insurance companies, private insurance companies, GIC, that is reinsurance. And he is also taking care of the digital cyber, fintech, insurance tech across the financial service sector. He is the Chief Information Security Officer and Technological Officer of the Department of Financial Services, Ministry of Finance. Previously, he was also served the additional charge as a Managing Director and CEO of CERSAI, a fully government-owned technology entity managing national digital registers for security interest and central Know Your Client, CKYC. So Saurabh also serves the Government Nominee Director on the Board of National Insurance Company. He has a more than 25 years service experience in the financial sector. With this, on behalf of the IMC and on behalf of our President Anand Singhania and all of our speakers and uh, all the participants, I extend a hearty welcome to Saurabh Mishraji. Welcome, sir. And uh, we would like to have your uh, address, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Narendra. And uh, thank you so much, uh, IMC uh, dignitaries who are sitting here on this round table as well as the fellow participants. It's indeed an honor to be a part of uh, this important uh, session that you have put together in terms of ideating and debating, uh, possibly the most important thing that touches the sector, which is insurance for all. Uh, I do recollect, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So I do recollect, uh, I do recollect Prime Minister's vision, which he had spoken from the of, uh, of Red Fort in 2021 on 15th August, that each eligible Indian should be insured. And I then correlate it with possibly what is the vision that he held on in the last uh, 15th August talk uh, of his, which he spoke about what is it, what takes us in this Amrit Kal to be a developed nation. And he had created uh, punch run or punch important areas, the five areas. And one of them was the, the developed nation. And I personally see uh, coming from the sector for over two and a half decades that uh, one of the most important items that a developed nation should have in that checklist or tick box is whether that nation is insured or not. Insured for its assets, insured for its life, insured for its health, in short for its liabilities and so on and so forth. So to my mind, this is the most defining way in which we can think, ideate, and really take forward the sector if we are able to see insurance for all in these years in which we try and complete the Amrit Kal best of our advantage to the best of opportunity that we have. 
talking about uh, the sector and its growth, uh, as we all know, friends, that we have completed over two decades of the liberalization era, which started off with IIDA Act, the formation of the regulator. And then we saw, along with that, the FDI, which started coming in, the private sector, which started coming in, while we continue to hold on and provide strength to the public sector, which was hitherto available before the liberalization happened. As we speak, it is beautifully poised between the public sector on one hand uh, and the private sector on the other hand. The amalgamation of the best practices of the systems of processes of people, talent, and so on and so forth. And my clear take on this is that uh, for our good in terms of the saturation, in terms of the penetration, in terms of the insurance to all, the best way forward from the sectoral point of view is a good army which is being brought up in terms of best practices and the available talents and systems to the public sector and the private sector. Going deeper onto the insurance aspect, there are certain defining themes which my sense is can take the insurance to the next level. One of the most defining theme within that is how do we include everyone, which also is known as a financial inclusion, both from the regulatory aspect, the way RBI, the way IIDAI, the way SEBI, or the PFRD sees it, as well as in terms of the sectoral perspective or the industry perspective. And I clearly can feel that the Jivan Jyoti Bhima Yojana and Suraksha Bhima Yojana, which has gone ahead from 2014-15 onwards, 2015 May when it was issued uh, from the Prime Minister. I think these two schemes have created a great baselining of insurance inclusion or insurance for all with regard to our covering the masses, which is in our teaching the uh, cumulative impanelment reaching around 40 odd crores with the two schemes. That clearly shows an intent and the journey towards the intent on how we have gone about into the inclusive space of insurance from the baseline standpoint. The identical baseline on health is available by way of Ayushman Bharat Jan Arugya Yojana, which has also reached, uh, including the state share of it, over 70 or 75 watt crores. Now, these are very, very uh, uh, clear numbers to convey that our financial inclusion actually and literally means insurance for all. However, we cannot stop there. We cannot sit on this laurel of what we have achieved in terms of the baselining of insurance. We need to now think about the two important levers, the penetration, which compares the insurance with the GDP, which, uh, which, which compares the insurance from an average person in the country to the overall population that we carry. So the adequacy of insurance and the coverage of insurance. And both these aspects, both regulatorily as well as the sector is concerned, are very clearly poised in terms of its growth, in terms of its reaching the adequacy level as well as reaching the sufficiency level. I have been seeing a regulator coming up with a series of reforms tries to de-bottleneck the problems that the insurers are facing or the intermediaries are facing. I'm also seeing such an important aspect that from DFS side, legislatively, we have been able to kind of unleash by way of uh, a rate reduction into the Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana uh, in terms of the value being increased for the premium. And once the premium is increased, the overall price which is available to the insurers becomes far more palatable. And so is the case of Suraksha Bhima Yojana. The other important thing which I've seen in this current finance bill is that uh, the GST uh, levy has been taken off from the Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, something that our, uh, uh, some of the friends sitting here uh, in this dais, I do remember Anand and I speaking about it, can we take away the GST burden as well. So that has been taken away now, and it's a formal notification after the finance bill. So some of these important aspects are meant to really go to the last level. Talking about the bill, which is uh, up for the discussions, and after that, uh, hopefully seeing the light of the day in terms of the parliament assent, uh, is also uh, uh, a path-changing bill after what Malhutra Committee 1994 had done it. And to that extent, uh, it should unleash the power at the type, category, class, or subclass level, something that we had put up for the public consultation, which means that whichever way you want to start your insurance journey in order to create the penetration density, adequacy, and the coverage, I think everybody who's an existing insurer or a, or a potential insurer as an on 
entrepreneur today can really look at in terms of taking it forward to each nook and corner of the country, each brother and sister of the country, and taking this to the level wherein we are expected to take it to an insurance for all. The certain areas in terms of the product, to the processes, to the operations, to the solvencies, to the financial health, as well as to the customer experience. I think each one of the areas as we are speaking about are under revolution, both by my industry colleagues, as well as the efforts which are being done to the regulatory side. So I compliment both the efforts which are taking place. I think friends, we have a journey ahead and we need to continue with that journey. It's more like a baton being handed over from one JS to the other, from one chairman to the other, from one CEO to the other. So long as we see that Amrit Kal coming up with each one of these areas, really coming to the fore. With these words, I wish this conclave a good luck, this round table a good luck, and expect a lot of right ideas coming up from here, which can be useful for us as a country and me as a in charge of the sector from the joint secretary perspective as well. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ji, Sagarji. And uh, we will look forward for our annual conference, your physical presence also. We will uh, get in touch with you. And uh, today on a virtual basis, you have covered uh, quite a lot of points and very useful. And uh, overall, the, both the government and the regulator and all the, both the private pr public uh, and all the stakeholders are endeavoring to reach out uh, on India basis and in increase the density of the insurance. And uh, that way, lot of facilitation from the regulator and from the legislative also are being brought under your leadership and others. So I wish you all the best in your endeavors, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. We will uh, have the, uh, what do you call, CEO round table on the topic, current state, how can this be achieved? Bhima Vahak, Bhima Vistar, Bhima Sugam, and uh, state allotment to each insurer to penetrate like a, uh, our district level, state level bankers committee. And uh, every day we find one, one, uh, uh, no, uh, that he wants to do later. Uh, that is uh, what uh, his colleague is. Uh, okay. uh, but you wanted, yeah. uh, you can have, so so better. it is better through him first. What do you want? Um, no, I because we have Prakash it. also on the way, Prakash. Yeah. Yet to come. Oh, he is yet to come. Ah. So we can. We can have no. Yeah. Ah, that's why we. Yeah. Our uh, Amit Roy had to go to BKC, and he has a very important area today. We are. Uh, we, we must congratulate that he is becoming a partner of uh, Price Water Cooper. So it's a congratulation from the one position he is getting to the main partnership. So prior to that, because uh, now we need to have what are those various reforms, and uh, what are the implication of that and how this will change the entire scenery from the insurance sector, Avi is Amara Pirtaya. So there is a, uh, what you call, designed effort from the, that uh, government and regulator level. And from the other companies and all, you know, they are receiving continuously, one by one, by one. How they are keeping pace with those reforms and how they will take it on their front. There also we want some independent uh, view. Uh, that's why we have uh, uh, Aravind Dagaji from the Price Water Cooper, and he's also a chartered accountant and very important uh, uh, from the insurance sector. He has studied in depth. So today, for another uh, 10 uh, yeah. uh, minutes, yeah. we will have a presentation by Aravind Dagaji. Yes, sir. Is that on? Thank you. So. Uh, thanks everybody on the panel and also in terms of reform. So it will be jointly taken by me and Amit both in terms of the reform. Uh, just a quick introduction from my side. Uh, I think primarily I deal on the accounting side. But I think one thing which is the theme which is being set by this government very clearly, which kind of, you know, dovetails into this, that insurance for all by 2047. I think the government is just not probably while they are enabling all to ensure that everybody gets insured, but at the same time, they are cognizant that we need to be more, uh, we need to be speaking a language which is more globally understood. And I, that's why the reforms which are being taken are now will ensure that India is at par with the globe. And I think one of the biggest reform which is going to come to uh, the insurance sector is introduction of new accounting standards. Now, hitherto, I think if you were probably pick up uh, insurance balance sheet or financial statement and with due respect to the numbers and everything which is there 
it was not easy for a layman to understand what's actually happening but now i think there is a big change which uh, irda is now putting through and what we understand is that irda is now saying that even insurance sector should adopt the globally accepted norm which is indians and according to me that would be a big sea change primarily for the insurance sector some of the companies are already probably adopted indians in some shape and form being probably uh, say subsidiaries jvs or associate of banks uh, or maybe say nbfcs in some shape or form they might have done it uh, especially those who are to give an example like an aditya bilda who has probably a parent which is aditya bilda or similarly any other nbfc which has an insurance uh, company they would have already done some bit of it but the biggest change and i think i believe this is as good as finance transformation for the entire insurance sector and when i say finance transformation is just not about accounting it's going to touch at the lowest level in terms of how expenses are being captured and that's a huge sea change which is going to happen the glide path which we understand from irda uh, maybe they might give you ab about say 18 to 24 months starting now so that means uh, the work needs to get started yesterday Uh, the change which is going to happen which is in days is to probably say now when you sell a policy as an insurer you need to be sure on day one whether you are making a loss on that policy or you are probably going to be profitable or maybe just profitable now to make that assessment on day one for everybody whether at a single policy level or to probably take an entire portfolio it's not going to be easy that means the big change which will happen from a business side is you will be more sensible in terms of pricing your product you might still be in the race to probably get the market share but at the same time now there will be more onus at the business level to ensure that you now price your products well today products rightly or wrongly are being sold more as investment products than insurance products and pardon me for this and i think this standard will now force majority of the insurance companies especially on the life side to sell more of insurance products rather than investment products that's the theme of it because now if you are going to sell an investment product it is going to get called out on your financial statements that way and i think that may not be maybe the endeavor of an insurance company and this particular standard as in when it comes in or the global standards when it comes in it's going to be a sea change simple things like uh, to say that your policy which you have sold is onerous on day one to get that realization and then book that loss up front is going to probably lead to higher solvency requirements to ensure that you have that much solvency also available right so it's just not going to be a simple accounting jugglery which you do it will lead to its own share of challenges uh, own share of probably getting the data the least which probably people don't realize i believe this is a combination of actuarial accounting and data together if all the three pillars don't fire at all trust me the standards will never get implemented and my suggestion at least also to the government and everybody is please introduce these standards along with changes in banking because majority of the subsidiaries are subsidiaries of banks the majority of insurance entities so please ensure that indias gets rolled out for banks along with insurance that would be my suggestion also to uh, saurab ji and maybe you know it gets passed on over there because it will make life easier insurance company because just imagine you convert to a new set of and your parent might probably convert 3 years or 4 years down the line to probably do that data twice it's not going to be easy so my suggestion would be that there should be uh, you know with the talks of a super regulator or wherever it is to ensure that there is cohesion there is not much of uh, probably uh, you know disruption in that sense but yes be prepared for disruption with the introduction of new standards because it's going to probably give you insight into data which you thought was done in dusted a policy was sold trust me that's going to probably come back again because you are going to rewrite or understand more about that policy now you might have probably grabbed market share then but now when you probably look at the contours of the policy it's different so expense allocation is going to get more critical in the new standards as such you have to be more focused on it acquisition expenses which hitherto were probably lost now they are going to get more factored into your entire calculations so and obviously the change which probably i think amit will speak about in terms of expense of management the removal of limits uh, amit will stress upon it that is going to get baked in it's a sea change 
So I'll probably end at saying that INDES is one of the biggest reforms which IRDA is now contemplating. All insurers have to gear up understand companies which are known have already started their process in terms of taking the steps to ensure that how do you convert into but if the glide path is that by january 25 you need to be ready with a full set of pro forma financial statement it's already started right it's not much time which is available in that sense it's it's probably another 21 months now from now and to start getting the data from 21 months from now you'll have to start actually yesterday but nevertheless start quickly uh, faster have a governance have a steering committee to ensure that this gets drilled down at the last level uh, it can't be just left to the finance department it has to start right at the top for to ensure that it is getting implemented in the right spirit otherwise there will be challenges which was there by the way the globe has already moved on to that standard effective first january 23 so now for us to say if we are going to be one of the developed economies right and we are going to be top five we can't be away from what the globe is speaking we'll have to speak the same language and my experiences for other entities who have adopted india it actually makes our companies look much much more better because that opaqueness which globe sees that you have not converted to their language goes away we actually probably grow in the pecking order in the world so my only request would be to embrace these reforms with open arms and make that shift quickly rather than later uh, amit you can probably add on to it i think a couple of things uh, on the on the side of the reforms clearly we are on the exciting side and uh, arvind trust upon expense on management expense of management is something uh, guys am i audible yeah yeah, yeah. So I think expense of management is something which is evolving now, and it's a double-edged sword. And why I say so is that uh, this is something which has to be decided by the board on how much you spend on acquisition, how much you spend on other activities of the company. And uh, why I am again saying that this could be a double-edged sword is that this is a tipping point of the industry. Uh, while a large number of players are doing well, making profit. At the same time, there's a lot of players who are actually struggling for their existence. And you see uh, merger, you know, happening. That's the reality of the industry. I think primarily uh, what is very exciting overall on the uh, regulation reform side is something that today insurance companies can decide what they want to do in terms of product. They are... Uh, compliance reports all of that is getting standardized and it will be on the on the hands of the insurers to decide how much you want to spread overall uh, i think as a country it's an exciting time of reforms because in my three decades of industry experience i have not seen anything like this in last 18 to 24 months of reform uh, that that i saw from irda and I'm sure when I uh, speak to the CEOs on the panel today, they'll they'll uh, actually touch upon much more relevant topics. So with that, I will give you back. Thanks. Uh maybe the model is like what you probably do in a mutual fund industry where they are saying that maybe your total expense ratio should be so much how do you manage it is now left up to probably insurance companies and i think that's going to probably now lead to more focus as you said a double edged sword i do agree with that if you want to spend more on acquisition then probably ensure that your marketing is taken care of or vice versa so now people will be more conscious about it earlier because of limits there were reasons enough to say because this is limited but we still need to compensate xyz you probably had various other structures now that limitation is gone right so now the onus is on all the insurance companies to ensure how do they make their business more profitable and trust me the amount of money 
which india can get in fdi and insurance can be much much more larger as compared to probably any other sector and if you probably take an example uh, you know nearby in asia if you take china the largest fdi is actually in the insurance sector that tells you that if we embrace global reforms quickly and mind you india is probably one of the only countries which has proper solvency requirements to probably take care of it there are quite a lot of companies who probably don't or countries who don't even have that and larger developed countries so i think we should be proud of it but at the same time build upon our scale and ensure these reforms with a mindset to change quickly and uh, probably embrace it with whole heart i think irda as probably amit said in the last 18 to 24 months is trying to enable reforms and is probably coming up with an open mind to hear the problems with the industry has faced and i think they are coming with these changes so time will tell in terms of how does it help us but yeah reforms are probably here to stay as i can see in terms of the mandate from irda give a big hand to Sir, sir, I have one quick question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the India's uh, uh, global standards is on implementation today. In terms of ranking, where are we as far as disclosure yeah. norms? Yeah. So I think uh, India's is probably an offshoot from IFRS, which is the globally accepted standard. IFRS is now probably there in more than hundred odd countries, predominantly within Europe and including Asia. uh insurance standard per se which is ifrs 17 that got changed or effective 1st january 23 globally also now uh india is probably on the path where india is saying that please adopt it in india today india has already adopted sir for non financial companies and for non banking financial companies it's already there it's only banks and insurance companies which are yet not probably moved on to the a uh, new set of standards uh, rbi has already started its work in terms of goading banks to accept it they have already come out with discussion papers to ensure that banks embrace it over a period of time irda has already probably set the ball rolling uh, if i am not wrong i think they did mention the member finance uh, did mention that pro forma financial statement should be prepared the latest which i understand again uh, not confirm but uh, irda is now going to come up with a glide path that insurance companies now set up or get their pro forma financial statements somewhere ready around january of 2025 so that's the mandate so to answer it's already accepted in more than 100 odd countries and for india some set of companies are already under that it's just a question of time and i think rightly so india took its own time to ensure that financial institutions probably understand it better how it is impacted globally and then it gets introduced within india and india will have this benefit because it will see how globe has adopted it 23 24 and then maybe 2 3 years down the line we can adopt it better thank you thank you thank you arvind daga ji that uh, as he rightly said it uh, us gap was the fair value concept similarly this uh, india is and uh, the investors from the international arena will be able to look at uh, in a fair way uh, once the balance sheet is converted and as he said in the among the financial institution all the uh, except the public sector bank uh, all the private sector bank and other banks and nbfc have already followed and that's where he said when the insurance is adopting that since quite a lot of insurance are also promoted by the public sector bank it would be ideal that the banks and i think uh, the banks are doing extremely well and their financials are completely improved and uh, this may be the right time for the regulator to introduce in the public sector bank also and uh, that would uh, uh, give a fair uh, account of all the other uh, players in the financial sector so this is a far reaching and similarly expense allocation and uh, getting the fair value of the pricing of the policy very very important uh, changes so it is not only on the developmental side reforms are coming it is also on the accounting side so it is a combination of all and uh, current our uh, irda what you call uh, chairman he was in the banking uh, financial services so from that best of the what you call practices are also being brought to insurance industry so now we will have more discussion on these and also some of the new product and all that with the uh, industry players so we have uh, satbir uh, singh joint group ceo and all of you are aware of policy bazaar 
and all of you are all online no insurance and it has grown a very big he is the more than 20 years of global experience in this uh, uh, industry also and he is also a big investor in uh, book my show yatra doubt nut jip loan web chat uh, chutney uh, like that and capital 18 network 18 so he has a, and also he has worked in city group in new york and uh, in hong kong and is iit delhi holds mba from and also indian institute of management ahmedabad we give him a big uh, welcome uh, from the imc also we have uh, dr s prakash and uh, he is the managing director star health and allied insurance all of you are knowing that star health uh, uh, is uh, one of the very reputed and very what you call uh, very growing and uh, very steady uh, insurance company and uh, mr dr prakash is actually a uh, what you call passionate general surgeon so is a surgeon heading the insurance of the health that is a really good with a flair for finance and insurance a compulsive do gooder with the innovation as the baseline and uh, so we welcome uh, from the imc dr s prakash ji and uh, you know lic everybody when they talk about i should not talk from the in life insurance they talk of lic only even though we have quite a lot of insurance players in the life in the other sector so lic has been, been the big and they went through the public issue also first time that and uh, mr r sudhakar executive director he handles the marketing as well as the pd and uh, cmo uh, of the life insurance corporation of india he has a vast experience and he has earlier to that he was the chief of investments in the lic and he was also in nairobi uh, in a senior uh, assistant general manager and uh, he was deputed to that company also then uh, he has a what he call uh, handled the information technology pension and group schemes corporate communication and he has worked in uh, main uh, like mumbai division 3 kozhiko division ernakulam kottayam coimbatore and he was also in chennai handling the bank assurance and all so with this i extend a hearty welcome to sudhakar sir so we have other uh, speakers also i will when i come to their area i will be talking and now mr uh, just now you heard him also mr amit roy uh, he has been the managing director now he has become the partner of the insurance and allied and he happened to know that he has first joined sometime lic also so all along he is in the insurance sector uh, and uh, today we are very happy that both from the aravind and uh, amit roy both of them pws people are here all due to uh, our friend uh, mr anand pejawar all the speakers here no through the anand pejawar he has worked and got that so i extend a hearty welcome to you amit roy and you will be moderating and uh, your uh, moderation along with the ceo our uh, anand pejawar also will participate if at all required he will also be there and other side our ashwin parik also there even though later he will be speaking from the external angle with this floor is open for you you can take up to 615 time thank you so much dr narendra and uh, delighted to be a part of uh, the discussion with such evident uh, speakers on the panel uh, this is an opportunity for me as a person for sure to get the views of our esteemed speakers and uh, as i said that uh, insurance in a, a real shole moment now and uh, the actions and uh, the activities which we are witnessing in insurance has never been ever before and not just on the side of the uh, reforms that we just spoke about also from the perspective that india officially has become the most populous country you know and i don't know whether we should clap for it i don't know whether we should uh, be uh, uh, you know feeling good about it but i think one thing definitely you all should feel good about it is that india is definitely going to get the benefit of demographic dividend and what that means is majority of the population will be lying in between 21 to 58 years so that's a good news for the country for sure and possibly that is why the government has taken the stand of ensuring that such a demographic dividend should get the reward of insurance for all. In that backdrop, let me start by saying 
that while many people fret about 4% of penetration in insurance, uh, having been a practitioner of life insurance and also seeing non-life and health insurance across the world, I personally think possibly we should think of protection gap a little more than penetration by GDP. India is a country which is widely varied in terms of protection gap. And the larger problem possibly is lying there that India is having around 90% of protection gap, which is something that I would request the panel also to reflect on. There has been plethora of reforms and uh, maybe Dr. Prakash, uh, I, I can't stop myself from starting from you because the kind of activity that we have seen in health insurance has been really great and your company actually drove that in a very big way. Having said that, many people do not appreciate the fact that India offers cheapest medical insurance in the world and uh, with, with worst claim history in the world. And uh, what are your thoughts when we say that insurance for all, given that in spite of having Ayushman Bharat, there's a large missing middle, you know, which is missing out on the, uh, you know, insurance coverage part of it. So over to Dr. Prakash for his input. Uh, thanks, Amit. Uh, as you as you rightly said, health insurance, uh, retail, and uh, group insurance is around three point nine and uh, close to around eleven point two something. You know, yeah. still we are only fifteen sixteen percent, yeah. and there will be a lot of overlap within this uh, group and uh, retail. retail. So, adequate health insurance for Indian uh, citizens is still lacking, and um, other government schemes are more on. Uh, talk and on papers. But when it comes to the real suffering of the man who is in need, a lot has to be addressed. Still, India thinks that health insurance is for the rich and affluent. Yeah. Whereas the people who are at need, the common man who is in trouble, he still has no access to health insurance. So the products, how industry is trying to look at making it more flexible, more cost effective, and more convenient so that they can have cashless facility wherever they go, whether they are in tier two or tier three cities. So these reforms have to happen invariably in the health sector. So as, at one end, we are glad that industry has grown. What used to be 9% of the overall general insurance portfolio health in early 2000, it is now around 36%. Yeah of the uh, general insurance portfolio. And this year, it is expected to cross around 90,000 crore. Yeah. With general insurance doing around 2,56,000 crore. So meaning that 36% in Niti Aayog uh, presumes this is going to cross 40%. So by 2030, if I can look at you know insurance penetration in India, as you rightly said, we will talk more on the protection gap than on the penetration. That makes a lot of sense. So health insurance premium, which has grown from 20,000 and dot crore to around 73,000 by end of FI 22, it has grown at a CAGR of around 20.36%. Correct. The last seven years. Correct. But in the next seven years, we are very much interested in the next seven years. By 2030, what is going to be the status? That is going to determine whether we, have, we will reach insurance for all by 2047. Yeah. The initial five, six years to come, it is largely going to determine how the industry is going to reach the target of 2047 insurance for all. So given the drivers of growth, meaning that people are living longer, life expectancy is growing, but they live with a lot of comorbidities. Yeah. The per capita income, what, what used to be around 1,900 USD has become 2,500 in the last three, four years. Per capita income is on the rise. More and more private hospitals more and more modern advancements in medicine available and corporatization of hospitals. When we were medical students, two things we have seen. We used to talk about health for all by 2000. Right. In the, in, uh, when I passed out in 1990, my medicine. So mid eighties, the all community medicine topics used to talk about health for all by 2000. Exactly. But now it is yeah. 2023. Still, you know, health for all is not it's at a, all in our yeah. motto. It's a dream. Now we are trying to talk about health insurance for all. Yeah. So, and uh, those days, the biggest, uh, like, you know, the, the VIP, if they want to be treated, they used to go to the professors of medical college for treatment. Today, it is all private hospitals. Correct. 
So corporatization of hospitals, more and more awareness post the pandemic, all these drivers of growth. <clears throat> now I will ask you a question, sir. If in the last seven years, industry has grown at a CAGR of 20.26, given the drivers of growth, how do you expect the next seven years? Is it the same 20% or 25 or 30%? Correct. If it is 20%, what is around 9.1 billion GWP last year, right. should become close to around 40 billion. Yeah. If it is 25%, it should reach around 55 billion. If it is 30%, it should reach around 70 billion plus. Meaning that there is a lot of uh, push. Uh, chairman of IRDI is very positive, very aggressive, and he wants insurance to penetrate several fold in the next uh, like you know, few years to come. So given this support by the regulator and the push, health insurance is more becoming what used to be a push product, it is becoming a limited pull. And we envisage this 9.1 billion to reach around 45 billion at least by, by 2030. This Essentially, this has to happen. And I want in this growth, more and more deserving people, middle class people, people who can be pushed into poverty because of health reason, because of a major diagnosis like heart disease or cancer or a trauma can push a family into poverty. We are looking about increasing our like, you know, GDP, but we have to prevent people from being pushed into below poverty group because of health reason. <clears throat> Four poor families are pushed into poverty every year. So we have to look at how we can design more flexible and affordable policies and include those segment of people who are not already under the cover. Now, gross return premium is increasing, but number of people who have insurance, is it increasing? Correct. Is or easy. is it the same people who have an insurance buying another top of policy or a let PA me, policy let me come or back. a benefit policy? Yeah, let me come back to you on the coverage part of it. The other, other area that I wanted to cover almost with you or in parallel is that we just spoke about uh, the demographic dividend and the end population and all of that. Uh, maybe uh, both, uh, you know, uh, I, should, I should ask this to Mr. Singh in terms of how Policy Bazaar is looking at it in terms of netizens getting into it. And the question that I have for both of you is that is average age of customer for health insurance coming down? Because if the right behaviors are getting clicked and if the right supports are given, then are you seeing enough, you know, interactions, activities in terms of how people are uh, behaving on that segment? Let's say, let's say take the segment of 30 to 40, if not below 30. So what's I, your I'll view? from Singh first. I think you have to switch it on. Thank you. Uh, so thanks, thanks for inviting me. Uh, first, I'll just share our experience. Uh, our median age is 30 years uh, for health insurance. So I think we are already on the younger side of the discussion. But uh, taking your question into a more macro level, I we have seen that, especially with COVID, in the months that COVID was at its peak, the number of young people who came to health insurance dramatically increased. Uh, I think companies like Star Health introduced, you know, Young Star, that was a youth oriented product. Uh, other companies have also done that because one of the challenges for the younger people is that their main feeling is that why am I buying health insurance? Because I'm not going to use it. Young people feel that they are invincible. I think the other feeling yeah. is also, am I subsidizing for people who no, are... Which is precisely that... <laughs> which is precisely that point that I am paying premium, which is being used by other people. Yeah. So one of the things that I think the industry has worked on is to say that, okay, let me give you other benefits, right? There should be some wellness benefit, fitness benefits, uh, any OPD benefits. So people have started to introduce policies, both appropriately priced as well as addressing this concern that, okay, you may not need hospitalization, but maybe you need, you can get yourself, you know, a checkup done and all. And I think COVID in that sense is kind of like from an insurance industry perspective, it could not, nothing could be bigger than COVID in giving people that, see, because what is the challenge with insurance? Largely, we all know that insurance is good for us, but we don't do it for various reasons and we can touch upon those. And when something like this happens, like when do you go and buy health insurance for yourself or a term insurance? When somebody around you has that problem, 
like i was sitting on the plane today next to me sat a relatively young person and he explained to me that he bought term insurance because something happened in his family i mean i don't want to go into the details and he said that if it that had not happened i would never have bought it so so i think covid was kind of like a global wake up call where a lot of us a lot of young and old people realized that you know you do need protection so to answer your question yes we did move younger during covid but unfortunately as covid has gone away we have also skewed back to older so the in fact what has been very surprising to me at least is that the snap back post covid has been very fast mm -hmm. so this year we had like we speak to you know consumers almost every day every month and one of the feedback that we got from many consumers was that look if i was if i could survive covid then you know i can survive anything so wow. people people can take things in any direction you know depending on the situation now i'll just take one more second to explain to you why that happens because you know there is a tendency to just look at the surface now behind the surface what happens is that a person let's say who earns 5 to 7 lakhs a year right our target set customer earns 5 to 15 lakhs a year so let's take the people at the lower end who are earning 5 to 7 lakhs for that person buying health insurance is a substitute for various things one year they may buy health insurance next year they may go on a holiday third year they may you know use it to pay for their children's school fees or something mm -hmm. so that is the biggest fundamental problem that people are at the edge they have to make these decisions most of us around this table are probably have to make that the real world the real indian middle class is making this trade off and i think that's one of the challenges for the industry and i think dr prakash of course referred to it thank you thank you so much mr singh and uh... very contextual and that kind of brings uh, to my mind the question uh, maybe mr sudhakar would be the best person to answer that everyone is so gung ho about insurance for all what will drive the growth in a, in a country where actually the investor i mean investor for insurance making money making sizable money to put my 100 rupee and i am a brutal business person will i put it for insurance companies the uh, shares are not the most sought after shares that's a brutal reality but the entire country is extremely gung ho that insurance for all would happen so mr sudhakar the question is what do you think will drive this dramatic growth the regulations came and we saw uh, like uh, dr prakash also mentioned that uh, you know in a way average you know earning of the people is improving if not radically is improving so how optimistic you are on that growth thank you thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this uh, program uh, firstly let me qualify by saying that insurance by, uh, by 2047 is going to be a moving target number one because where we are now and where the population will reach in numbers at that time is going to be different so that is number one it is a moving target in terms of numbers it is also going to be a moving target in terms of the sum assured which people ought to be buying at as we go along for instance i will give you one example uh, when we came out with pmjjby it has come out in 2015 at a 2 lakh cover mm -hmm. recently the premiums have been revised after looking at the claim experience and all that and uh, it looks more or less uh, balanced and uh, a break even product as of now but at the same time the 2 lakh today might be inadequate in that sense probably what uh, even government should think is that apart from the 2 lakh they should also give an option of a 5 lakh in which case a few more i mean people who have you know come up in life can again go for a term insurance you know, yep, yep. you know that's one one of the things Now, i'll i'll just put the uh, i'll uh, i'll do a ground study of uh, what is the population and how it looks like see we have about 142 crores of population in india today out of which uh, people below 20 who are not earning in the sense they don't have insurable interest as at that time will be around 40% we we remove them from that and also people who are elderly let us say who are into the pension age and who require more of health insurance as they uh, age gracefully so that two uh, portions if we remove that's uh, almost about 68 crore what is left over is around 74 crore who may be in the earning age group of 20 to 60 now out of that again ladies and gents half half not all ladies are working so if we do all those calculations we end up with something like 50 crore of insurable population those who can actually 
come and pay premium and buy insurance for all the insurance schemes which we are talking about. Now, out of the 50 crore, I would say LIC itself has already insured or in, in its books, uh, almost 20 crores are there. The other companies will be. So I think somewhere around 25 crore is already insured in some way or another, maybe not up to the mark, not up to the sum assured which they deserve. There is definitely a protection gap there. Then there are 25 crore more who have not been approached or our communications have not reached them or the compulsion has not been felt. Again, we need to divide this into two. Like those who are at the very lower segment who may not be in a position to afford, but at the same time, they are earning something where a group insurance or some sort of a cover given by another organization right. will be of use. Sarugir. And those who can afford, but who have not yet been brought into and this is where uh, these two schemes, uh, the PMJJBY itself, which is a tried and tested scheme, which has worked for the last eight years, uh, sold through the banks, can be either augmented or further efforts can be made there. And then we have the Bhima Vahak uh, route, a new set of agents who will be coming in, uh, mostly by lady agents and from each and every Gram Panchayat, who will be popularizing these kind of schemes and uh, the Bima Vistar product, which is a combo product, probably uh, the, the full uh, details are not with me, but I feel that it will be something like a term assurance to which uh, it can be a modular kind of scheme where I can have one unit of term assurance, one or two units of term assurance. We can have some units of health, some units of crop, et cetera, et cetera, together, and which can be put together and sold at the gram panchayat level, at the lowest levels. Now, the thing is, if we really require health insurance, I mean, all these insurance to be take, uh, taken off by, by the people or bought by the people by 2047, not only we have to put the systems in place now, they have to be resilient and they have to be carried. I mean, it has to be an institutional system which is going to be there for the, a length of time so that we reach that particular, uh, you know, target. So these are my few uh, thought processes when it comes to tackling that. Being one of the largest or the largest life insurance company, of course, the role of LIC is going to be there. We will be, uh, we will be uh, cooperating very um, in a very high manner with the government as well as the IRDA, you know, all these ideas that are coming there. And uh, we are sure that this is doable. There's no doubt about it. One thing which, of course, uh, I, I, I also feel is that and an element of compulsion can be brought in. Like we have mandatory third party insurance. Can we not have at least to get employed or be employed at whatever level, whether it is MSME, wherever it is, at least the element of PMJJ, BY or a BIMA uh, Vistar can be made mandatory. It can be again thought of that either the individual himself buys it or the employer is going to buy it. It's going to be, I mean, because the cost is so low, I think it should be affordable and the base minimum should be made available to all the deserving uh, the, the, the groups which I, I spoke about that 50 crore or whatever numbers that are there as of now. I think excellent uh, canvas that you uh, took Mr. Sudhakar in terms of public policy, in terms of uh, affordability of insurance, in terms of easier routes of fulfilling and also the companies uh, who will spread that. And uh, it, it's actually, you know, kind of a uh, very exciting time ahead. So going back to Dr. Prakash again, I just wanted to see once again, there's so much, and Mr. Sudhakar, you heard also, you know, he touched upon the products and uh, better products, affordable product. Again and again comes to my mind that India is already affordable in terms of pricing of yes. the product, right? <laughs> so is it is it product, is it distribution? I, I feel like going on and on, but I know that Dr. Narendra is looking at the clock. So, uh, you know, Dr. Prakash, what's your, you know, quick two, three things which will drive the growth? You feel that, and is there a wish list from the regulator? <clears throat> See, I said, uh, as a person who has spent uh, two decades in medical field and more than 15 years in insurance, I can say that to precisely answer your question, is it product or distribution or pricing or good servicing? Every, every component has got its role. We have to do a very good service. Only then insurance can penetrate. Penetration require, doesn't require advertisement, but it requires a very, very good soul satisfying service. And uh, we have to clear the negative perception in the minds of the people. Great. We have to build the trust. Yes. And the products have to be very, very you know, attractive. And what type of products? 
today in india it is not those who are healthy we are talking about the young people affordable people healthy people it is not that segment which are looking at buying health insurance it is those who have a strong family history who are at a threat of a disease who have a high fear complex they are the people who want to buy an insurance is insurance available for people with a diagnosis health insurance have to graduate from covering normal people to covering people with a disease only then we can look at penetration in a bigger ways wow that's a great answer amazing yeah uh, that that bring bring by the other point that uh, i think i think mr singh you touched upon india being a fatalistic country you know we we believe in uh, blessings from elders you know so many gods are there almighty is there and all of that and in spite of realizing that you know there are risks which are out there i insure my car i don't drive without insurance of the car on the day one i don't insure myself so is there something in terms of awareness level that you see a radical change on that any any public policy you think would be helpful mr sudhakar interestingly touched upon that it should be mandatory is there is there a way that mr singh you think that very quickly you know some two three point that comes to your mind yes sir i think that's a great question and something we think about all the time i think the i think the awareness is not a simple thing as saying that people should be aware about insurance i think the question which is very difficult in insurance to make a people aware is that what happens if you don't have it it's it's a very very strange product you pay money up front and you hope like hell that you never have to use it and yet you know it is something that we can't avoid i mean there are some realities of life so the awareness has to be somewhat more targeted in terms of explaining what is the issue and you have to sometimes almost shock people yeah. because if you don't shock people insurance is a subject where people see yes yes okay great and you know they move on so i think awareness has to be very carefully calibrated and explained uh, to people because see i just want to touch upon a point that dr prakash made that one of the barriers to having more or more people insured is getting more healthy people into the system see finally anti selection to just to use a technical term is one of the biggest challenges of insurance True. if all of us were mandated to have health insurance like for instance in the us you are not even allowed to ask whether somebody has a pre existing disease or not right it is said that everybody has to be covered the population has a certain sort of uh, you know profile and that profile has to be covered by the industry so one approach to the whole thing is always to try and widen the base yeah. like and and it is my view that that is one of the challenges in protection products whether term insurance or health insurance is the lack of base surprisingly in india only 50 lakh people have term insurance that is a stunning statistic right and i'm sure many people in this room won't have term insurance right <laughs> so now some people may not need it that's a different point but it's it is a stunning statistic right only 5 crore indians or less than 5 crore indians have retail health insurance right because see it's not i personally believe that insurance is not equal to insurance i think adequate coverage for the right profile of the person is very very important because otherwise it leads to this problem that we have which is the second barrier to why people don't have insurance that they say that jab when i need to make a claim people will not be there now it's not that people are not there yes some cases may happen but largely it's also because of the wrong product being sold to the wrong customer if if a person is diabetic and if you whether that person has declared it or not and if you sell them a product which is for healthy people then naturally the insurance company at the time of claim will say that you are a diabetic because the doctor will say that yeah. so i think selling the right product to the right customer is very important and i think that's why it is important for us to have awareness about why insurance what is the product in insurance and the third point which i think which is incumbent upon all of us is to build the trust factor which is that sure. you know we've spoken about customer experience etc i can't stress enough how important that is and i think that's a function of product simplification and of course uh, service but, i think we are on time yeah. but uh, i i i can't leave it without taking some input from anand and uh, mr sudhakar also wants to put something but anand the point that i wanted to make is everybody in a way trust upon financial literacy and everybody in a way trust upon the leakages of insurance you know and on the non life side where the actually the protection gap is much much higher than people know and india as a country has been really lucky in terms of 
not having too much of uh, natural calamities. What are your thoughts on insurance for all of us? Um, thanks, Amit. Uh, my thoughts is that uh, I was listening to uh, my senior colleagues on making certain products mandatory. Uh, motor insurance is mandatory. Yeah. But still, but still, forty-eight percent of the vehicles are not insured. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Now, forty-eight percent of the vehicles are not insured under even third-party risk. Yeah, yeah. Which is Correct. very, very important. Great because point. today you go and hit somebody on the road, the liability is on you. And if you are not in a position, you are you are not covered. Then then there is a huge problem. True. Okay. Look at it. Till last month, and this is fact, which is which which is also there on IRD. People with physical deformity, mental deformity, were not insured under medical scheme. True. Okay. So IRD had to set up a committee. We were part of it, and then we came out with a product today that is allowed, and companies have started. Covering them on the individual side, yeah, on the individual policy side. So, yeah, we had to take so many years to come up with a policy which can actually cover physical uh, deformity and uh, uh, you know mental uh, illness, what what they call it as. So, we are we are heavily heavily underinsured. So, there's no doubt this uh, wonderful scheme that uh, insurance to all by 2047, which we have done. And more so, I think the emphasis on to, by the regulator is to give each state one or two states to each of the insurance companies to develop. So you have a life uh, insurance company, you have a general insurance company, you have a health insurance company, and how these companies can penetrate into the state right up to the last mile and try and see how you can cover. So that also includes the uncovered motor vehicles awesome. of 48% which are there in the vehicle. So they're going to make a list of these and give it to the uh, insurance company that will be made available to the insurance companies to try. Uh, see how you can uh, cover that. I'm not sure whether we'll be successful in covering 100%, but even if we can cover 50 to 60% of the uncovered lot, I think that will be a huge service to mankind done by the insurance industry. True, true. I think that's something which uh, we definitely need to push. One one last minute, uh, he wanted to, Dr. Uh, Mr. Stimagar wanted to put in. Yeah. I just wanted to touch upon the term insurance part of it, where a very minuscule portion of uh, India's population is covered under term insurance. Obviously, term insurance is something which is required by younger people who are entering the job uh, at that time because they don't have any type of cover and any loss to that life is going to be very impactful for them. Whereas once a person uh, starts saving and he is becoming financially uh, wealthy, that term insurance may not be required and there may be other uh, insurances which are required. But the issue here is that when, when it is term insurance, there's nothing paid thereafter. I think in India, there is a particular uh, expectation that when one goes into any type of a financial, uh, you know, in a de deposit or any kind of uh, uh, regular savings kind of thing. I mean, the savings element is more predominant and life insurance by its very nature, where the first two years or three years, nothing is payable. There is no surrender value. Thereafter, the surrender value keeps accu accumulating. Life insurance is the only long term which uh, long-term uh, kind of instrument which helps a person to reach a stage where he's having a lump sum at the end of it. Otherwise, any other things, unless it is a very, a very five to six years of post office or something where it can be rolled over, the other recurring deposits sometimes get, uh, you know, uh, stopped or it gets into a fixed deposit, which is used up. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing which really helps a person to accumulate and then reinvest and make it into a bigger corpus. So probably that is why the offtake of term insurance as a pure product which is bought is not there whereas a, uh, insurance which is linked with savings is what gets uh, more attractive uh, is what is more attractive to the buyer so this is one element which we need to keep in mind that is why as a term assurance can come under the compulsory compulsion part of it and the rest of it can be voluntary thank you that's a great point and uh, you know with that we'll conclude uh, with some great thoughts and thanks to IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry on uh, arranging this uh, great discussion. And I'm sure it will uh, reflect digitally across the country and will have a lot of uh, you know, inputs for the policymakers also. As, a, as an individual, Amit, you know, I am incorrigible optimist. So I would like to conclude with the fact that I am very gung-ho about insurance for all. And I know challenges are there on the path, but we'll Together as a country, we'll achieve it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit Raji. See, when our Prime Minister asked for uh, uh, Jandan Yojana account, you know, 
with the jam connectivity that is uh, gen our uh, what you call uh, aadhar mobile all that so banks have issued now 45 crores accounts and with the 1.6 lakh crores of balance and again a lot of them were given the insurance product also so in uh, whenever there is a call of that nature so one area you have not covered which i think later i will be asking also bank assurance because i myself four years i was the number one with the lic in getting them annual premium and uh, we stood uh, in that so the today the number may be increased to nine i think no each of that so your banks can uh, de definitely play a very important ashwin ji also will talk so now uh, because you you are living or yeah so before i ask uh, ashwin ji uh, mr amit roy has got to go to his office for uh, some important work on behalf of the imc i thank amit roy for uh, well uh, no doing the moderation and uh, i request our president to hand over a small uh, our uh, what you call momento to you give a big hand please you also want to go yeah to same meeting same meeting so, and uh, mr arvind dhagan he was a very spirited uh, person and he talked very authoritatively that these changes of accounting and other things are very much needed also so we thank you very much and uh, we request to our president to hand over a small sovereign to i request all the audience you keep some uh, questions uh, for uh, later we need to have all other audience and uh, we'll have the questions yeah sir thank you very much नहीं नहीं अभी वो हम सब रहेंगे ये इनका अकेला दो हाँ यू वांट अ ग्रुप अच्छा जी प्लीज नैन या My name is Sudhakar Malpe. I have been a, a regular uh, participant at uh, uh, IMC for last forty years. Uh, I also hail from a co I mean a coastal region where thirty percent of the nationalized bank took birth. So that's where you know we are you know very sensitive about insurance and all. Now, the important thing you mentioned about you know the higher solvency. You no, know, you also compared with China. Can you tell us you know what is the higher or what is a lower if you can explain to us you know and how do we make with this you know india you uh, know reaching the unreachable because you know it is a it is a ocean of thing and what is what will be in your in your this investment what should be the right timing is it one year two year three years thank you so maybe okay i'll answer in two three according to be the time should be 3 years from now there should be a dedicated timeline and i again stress upon this point banks and insurance company should go together with the same set of index it should not be separate because you can't have one sector of financial services mutual funds are effective first april 23 they are coming in but insurance companies in india are majority owned by private sector or public sector banks that's a statement of fact so unless and until and if the standards are going to lead to a significant finance transformation both for banks and insurance they should happen probably simultaneously in the country not separately is my view but that will help the resources to come together quickly that's my sense so i think 3 years down the line is uh, there is a, as far as solvency yeah, is concerned let me just uh, yeah. just add one or two things to your point in fact yeah. you know solvency numbers per se the adequacy is determined by various factors basically right. you know different regulators it's a totally a regulatory prerogative Correct. basically when we started the journey to answer your question in 2000 you know the major question was should we really peg it at somewhere around 200% i mean at the moment it is 150% and 1.5 times 
but 200 percent or should we really take it a little sort of you know a, a pragmatic view and take it lower now we knew i mean that is the regulator knew and the government knew that there was a lot of capital required in the insurance industry and therefore pegging it at 200 percent would have been a very very challenging for the insurance sector so i mean wisely it was arrived at 150 which was balancing between stability you know and also to make the cost of capital a little lighter compared to now there are jurisdictions where it is 100 percent there are jurisdictions which is 1.2 times basically i have practiced in about eight countries and there are jurisdictions in other places where they've softened the solvency requirements basically i think it's regulators prerogative quite clearly i think if you're going to admit more number of insurance companies in the industry i would rather keep it at 150 percent you know i mean some of my other participants may not agree but i would rather keep it at 100 and i would rather that the regulator keeps it at 150 percent then gradually after seeing how the you know they should look if there is a failure of a life company for example do we have regulations on runoff at the, this point in time we don't even have regulators on runoff i mean regulations on runoff at this point in time which means what happens if a life company fails for example what happens to pension products or long-term products or whatever so in that regard i mean i would i i thought solvency has to be it's not a mathematical number it's the government and the regulators perception and the industry's perception about how financially stable and strong it is basically so i mean that i thought was the response that i would like to you know, provide over here absolutely and, and uh, i mean i would say 150 percent agree with this suggestion on this because remember i mean i mean i don't want to delve into it a bank like an svb collapsed despite investing in government securities right why i mean somehow sometimes i believe as an individual why were those government securities not mortgaged and the same bank actually given money to them? Maybe the bank would have survived, right? I mean, and, and maybe that's as a layman speaking over here, not as a chartered accountant or anybody, but as a layman speaking. But maybe there are more nuances to it, which we probably don't appreciate. To last point, which is insurance for all, maybe the youngest on the table, and I feel if health insurance, if I were to say, if insurance companies start owning hospital, the running which you have to do, to probably say whether this cost is relevant or not, I think half of that ask will go away, right? Health insurance will probably become much, much more easier. I'm saying with my practical experience, just when you probably lodge a claim, a cashless claim, it still takes six hours for a cashless claim to get processed in this country. It should not. If the same insurance company is owning that network of hospitals, it would probably happen in a span of half an hour at best because they know that's the right cost. You, it need not go through all of these. Maybe that's a that that's a suggestion which I believe should come, and I think it's a question of time where it will happen. Second, as I believe, and as Sudhakarji and maybe Mr. Singh also probably mentioned, if you say if you want an Aadhaar in this country, insurance is must. Trust me, majority of them will do it because Aadhaar is now mandate for us. You make it mandatory for people, even for a 17-year-old to probably get a govern or to probably study in a government-aided school they need to probably produce their Aadhaar. I give my sons Aadhaar. Make that if you want Aadhaar in this country, you will also probably get insurance and that would be probably one of the says and use your health says which you get from government. If our GDP consists of more than 50% from services, it's a no-brainer that health insurance will increase because group health insurance as a product will increase because it's the service industry which is going to do. That Those are my two bits onto it. So, as he rightly said, Jandhan was a very good a thing which has happened but the, with that pool of insurance what we did we do right and as that's what i think sudhakar with you was mentioning if it was a pool not only to life insurance but also to a crop insurance to a farmer he would have been more interested in probably getting more money into jandhan because that makes it much much more incentive give them the option whether you want to use life crop or everything give them an option trust me once you give more options life will be better i mean those are some thoughts which I believe can come. Uh, Thank you with sure. all your uh, busy schedule, Aravind Ji. Thank you. Answer Thank this you. question. And uh, we are uh, now having Mr. Uh, Ashwin Parikh. He is, uh, uh, we can say, Pitamaha of the insurance and the banking <laughs> and financial sector. He has now Ashwin Parikh Advice Services, but he has worked in uh, E&Y, he has worked in uh, Delight, he has worked in Arthur Anderson, he has worked in Price Water Cooper, KPMG, India, UK, Dubai, and uh, in Australia, Germany, US. 
all over the world and uh, he is uh, also in various committee of the reserve bank irda government of india all that and uh, he has enabled uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, nbfc or the bank or a small finance bank payment bank to get license so with this he has been always uh, wanted by the ministry of finance and all and the sebi to give his committee and one of the rbi committee of the kv kamat committee you know that during the covid no the resolution of uh, 19 covid 19 assets there so he was there so with this sir i extend a hearty welcome from the imc and imc president now it is the forum for you to give external view of insurance for all 2047 sir you are sir sure no thank you so much you know what i'll do is i mean since i heard you know uh, sudhakar ji dr prakash mr singh i am tempted to use their inputs also towards the end of my my discussion uh, when i put up my presentation if it is possible sorry yeah i'll change the slide when i'll put up my presentation uh, all of you sirs you will be very pleased to see a lot of points that you already talked about dr prakash included are all covered in my presentation in some form or the other so uh, at the end of this session can we make this into a small sort of you know input from from all of you uh, let's say there are five areas that i'm going to touch upon i'm talking about supply side reforms demand side reforms i'm talking about affordability awareness and the availability of insurance the entire vision of 2047 has to be viewed in these five perspectives you know and therefore at the end of this session even the participants can do that on a piece of paper there is no need for you to put your name if you put your name that would be nice because it becomes a good feedback for imc to take it to the authority and say where are we on that vision i mean on a let's say on supply side reforms if you are on something like if you believe something like 6 on 10 on demand side let's say is the government and the regulator doing enough for example if you believe that it's 6 3 2 whatever put your score on these five aspects and give it back that becomes very important for mr pejawar to really get back to the authority and to the government in saying this is what this panel believes basically so uh, quickly i'll just take you through some of the experiences that i have personally gone through uh, we touched upon this narendra sir dr narendra did mention about the janadana program for example let's say and uh, so what was the vision where did it start i mean you know if i have to really i have been closely associated with the banking sector as well and closely associated with all the reforms in the banking sector now it all began in 2000 it all began in 1993 when dr narsimha rao started the first thought on you know inclusion financial inclusion and having more people into the thereafter the person who gave it some shape you know very good shape was actually dr yashwan sinha during mr bajpayee's time he gave it a very good shape thereafter all this would have been the government's wish sort of you know uh, it had to become reality and in order to make it reality they had to really approach one of the four regulators in the finance sector banking was the most powerful regulator at that point in time so in 2007 Dr. C. Rangarajan committee was constituted, and Dr. Rajan came out. Dr. Rangarajan came out with the first paper, which talked about both the supply and the demand side of it. It talked about how financial inclusion can be can be propagated by the banking system, you know, uh, and how exactly they can go about it. The three major questions: affordability. Was it affordable? Bank account opening was affordable. Would people still embrace it? the demand side of it no you know so it went through eight that's what i'm trying to point out it went through eight different improvements you know what was available was the supply side the demand side was still missing banks were really going all after opening up jandan accounts and 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 they suddenly started realizing that that was more there was a much larger reform behind it the larger reform being transfer of subsidies to the beneficiaries direct sub, direct transfer of the of the, the uh, that was a larger objective of the government as some of the other you know the 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 population that is people did not really embrace 
And uh, so the first incentive, and many of you who've been in banking, for example, will agree. I mean, you know, Mr. Pejavri will agree that initially an incentive of 500 rupees had to be given. It had to say that anybody who opens a bank account, automatically 500 rupees will be deposited. That's the supply side. Once you have an, let's say, opened an account, the regulator and the government's vision was that after that, it will go through four stages. First is opening of the account, then it would say deposits, then it would say loan account relationship, and the fourth one was selling of pension and insurance products. That was the fourth level of that Janadana program. The first thing happened, the second, third, and fourth, the government lost its track, you know, till Mr. Modi's government came in. And uh, that gave a tremendous amount of push, basically. They made it mandatory on the banking system. They forced the banking system to really distribute Jandan. And you see the numbers, you know, the coverage from suddenly 69, 70% grew all the way up to 91% of inclusion in the banking system. It was all thanks to the government push, you know. So that was the first one. Let's look at the other attributes that I talked about. Affordability, it was affordable. Availability, it was available through the banking network. I mean, at the time when Jandan was first conceived, the banking system had about 68,000 branches in the country. Later on, when Mr. Modi gave it a push, it was 86,000 branches in this country, you know, with more bank, I mean, banks coming in. So the, the availability was there, the affordability was there. Was there awareness? And who's responsible for awareness? I thought once again, it went back to the government. Till Mr. Modi or his sort of government really pushed Jandan, it wasn't really a program as such, an inclusion program as such. So Vision 2047, Insurance for All, has to be seen in the context of some of these aspects, basically. What goes into making that vision a reality, basically? I was associated with pension reforms right from 1997 onwards, when the first Oasis committee was formed. Uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Ms. Manika Gandhi, the then Minister of Social Welfare under uh, Atal Bihari Bajpayee's sort of government, had appointed the first Oasis committee. I was a member of that committee. It looked at pension for unorganized sector. That was the mandate that was given. In terms of reference given to our committee was, I mean, uh, uh, pension for the unorganized sector. Somehow or the other, Oasis too hijacked that concept. Oasis suddenly talked about both. It talked about introduction of shift from defined benefit to defined contribution. You know, and the government started taking sort of a closer look at that till about 2004, when Mr. Chidambaram, 2003, when he literally hijacked the program and converted that into only a mandatory program, basically. But even thereafter, look at the other aspects. Where is the demand part? The, if there was a belief that people will queue up as soon as that became an act, it was under originally under an ordinance, then it became an act. As soon as it became an act, the government was under the impression that people will queue up to buy pension products. Nothing of that sort happened. Nothing of that sort happened, basically. So then, I mean, they didn't think about the availability. The distribution channels are the weakest in the pension program today. They, there was no need, they thought, to distribute pension products. It was, as I said, hijacked only for mandatory kind of pension, only for government and for state government employees, basically. So today, what is the outcome of that poor penetration? Only 62 million people are covered under this you know, program. And that too, I mean, out of that, about 17 million, 63 million, out of that 17 million are mandatory, but they account for 91% of the fund. So which means uh, there is very little that has really happened to the unorganized sector in pension or to the affordability of, you know, to, to push the demand side of it at all, basically. Neither the availability nor the awareness. I'll come to the awareness program. Who's responsible for awareness? In this particular case, it's, it's I mean, the, event is, the ball has gone into a no man's field. Uh, neither the uh, regulator knows it's his responsibility. The government isn't taking up it as its own responsibility after having done its first reform from pay as you go into a contributed pension system. Is the government forgot about this program? It, it has clearly forgotten about the program. Now there are no other more programs. So I was the chairman of NPS Trust for six years. 
Uh, and when I was a trust chairman, the first thing I did was I sought for autonomy for NPS and I got it. The second thing I thought was I had to collect a certain amount of fee from the pension products, from all the pension collections to distribute for awareness creation. Somebody did talk about awareness and trust. And Dr. Singh also touched, uh, touched upon trust part. Who creates that awareness? I mean, who's really responsible for mutual fund industry? They gave it to MFI. And uh, I mean, mutual fund Sahi hai. is a campaign that the industry runs, but the industry had enough money to contribute. I mean, put, I mean, ask any insurer to put his hand on his head, I mean, uh, in his heart, and say, will he really, is he prepared to contribute to awareness creation? He's not. He does not. He's working out a very thin expense control that the regulator has prescribed to him, basically. So who's going to be responsible for that awareness is a major question we have. I mean, all this to make the vision. Uh... So in the conclusion part, I would just say, from the affid I mean, affordability part, I mean, we touched upon this very interesting subject. Is insurance a protection product or is it a savings product? You know, I think the government will have to redefine its vision. Uh, the regulator will have to redefine his vision. So, if you know, uh, Dr. Prakash touched upon mandatory, for example, health coverage. You know, now, I mean, I'm of the belief that when there is no affordability, uh, I mean, unless the government and the regulators intervene, there can be no sort of, you know, uh, penetration at all whatsoever. The government has to, I mean, we saw in Atal Pension Yojana, there was one program by the government sort of, you know, RBI runs about 150 programs, including export promotion, including MSME, SME, you know, everything. Regulator has to really do that and the government has to really do that to make it affordable, to make it spread, basically, you know. Otherwise, if there is no affordability, insurance is certainly not a pull product. It's a push product, all set and done. Now, in that situation, without channels or without adequate compensation to channels or without government programs, that penetration is, is a very illusionary sort of, you know, vision that we have in, at that point, at this point in time. Uh, I mean, somewhere we mentioned that uh, in case of, uh, medi I mean, medical services for all, we have just about like shifting the vision from 2000 to 2030 to shifting the, I suppose if without these five ingredients here in case of insurance also, we'll keep on shifting our objectives, you know, our, our uh, entire this thing. Awareness, I said, who's responsible? Insurance regulator does collect policy protection money from the sector, from the industry. What does it do with that policy protection? God only knows, you know. Time and again, there have been several representations, several papers suggesting that that money at least should be used for awareness creation. But the, the, now, once again, the ball is in, back in the court of the industry. The regulator believes that the industry has to create awareness, basically, you know. So, it's going to be an ever tossing kind of a ball between the two of them. Availability, I have my own doubts about open architecture. Mutual fund is uh, certainly open architecture. What is the coverage of mutual funds in this country? AUM wise, it's huge, but it goes only to the affordable people. It does not go to poor people at all, sort of, you know. So to that extent, once again, availability is a big question mark, unless more channels are created, and then acquisition cost, the regulator has to take a realistic view to it. You know, push products will need higher amount of acquisition cost, basically. Uh, my one line read is, whatever reforms you've seen so far, and I've got just one minute to conclude, whatever reforms we have seen so far are all supply side. You know, you're either, your use and file or everything else. I mean, even the larger, like, I mean, uh, giving uh, composite licenses, for example, these are all supply side of reforms. Where is the demand side of reform? So there is absolutely no reform or government push on the demand side, you know, basically. Unfortunately, Ayushman Bharat would have gone the insurance way, but then both the government, I mean, even the crop insurance could have gone the insurance way, for example, which is completely a ruined product at this point in time. Why is it so? The government started believing that in health insurance, the insurance will end up making more money. And the regulator started accepting that approach, basically. In the process, 
the penetration is not happening the coverage is not happening you know i mean so i mean once again ayushman bharat for example is now become part trust part insurance part some states are doing you know i mean whatever they please because health is at after all a health i mean a state subject basically so uh, these are some of the questions and i'm not saying that there are ready answers i'm saying these are the questions that the industry will have to grapple will have to, government will have to address you know to make the program or to make that vision possible sort of you know and uh, at the end you know i mean in case of banking system we have seen time and again if the government starts depending too much on that banking system for example on the balance sheets of the banking system then the banking system collapses you know if they start doing it on 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 insurance lord forbid and i, I mean lic could be one of the targets in a very lighter <laughs> way and i must say this but uh, i suppose then then there are issues i'm quite clearly with the thinking and with the reform itself basically so with that i would say uh, i would just conclude my observations on all these five points if you can give your score and just give it to 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 mr pejawar and to 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 dr that would be a big help thank you ashwin ji uh, i think uh, with the pension reforms as well as the other banking reforms and with the last uh, one uh, conclusion he has covered uh, really how that should go about and uh, as he right demand side rated more and uh, the insurance companies should be of ease of doing business one uh, even though our, our uh, anand pejar is there my personal experience i tell uh, my uh, i say sham ka waqt mein mera gaadi jaate the ek uh, tipper aa gaya bada tipper wo raat ko aake mera uh, pehle on malad side mein piche side mein hamara gaadi ko lagaya to humne gaadi ko baad mein police ne bola ye gaadi ko side rakho dono side gaya बाद में बोलता है ऐसा गाड़ी दोनों आप लेके उधर किधर पोलिस स्टेशन जाने का है ये रात का टाइम में पोलिस स्टेशन जाना उधर एफ करना आ, उसके बाद मीन में लिए टिप्पर वाला बोला हमारा साहब आता है बाद में हम अभी तो रजिस्ट्र इसका रिकॉर्ड होता है इसलिए नहीं बताएगा कोई आया वो ओनर का आदमी नहीं है दूसरा है वो भी वो बोला या किधर है ये है ऐसा करके बोला ऐसा करके बोला बाद में ही गेव सम डॉक्यूमेंट ये आदमी टिप्पर बोला मेरे लिए ऊपर से आपका गाड़ी दिखता नहीं था इसलिए हम मार गया आपका बिकॉज गाड़ी टिप्पर बहुत बड़ा है ना तो वैसे ऐसा करके बाद में मेरा लड़का को बुलाया हमने इधर से वो आगे भाग्य आ गया सब ये आया बाद में वो कुछ डॉक्यूमेंट दिया इसे रात में रात हमारा लड़का गाड़ी थोड़ा छोड़ दिया लड़का ने फोन किया वन दैट सर्विस है ना वो लाइन है वो बोला आप कोर्ट में डाल के एफ और कोर्ट में जाने के बाद ही आपको गाड़ी में कुछ मिलने का तो मिल सकता है उसका पहले कुछ नहीं मिलता है और इधर आप उनसे पर्सनल लेने का तो नहीं तो ये हमारा सिस्टम में ऐसा है तो ईस ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस एंड द व्हाट हाउ टू एनेबल दैट विद एंड आल्सो लेवल अभी हमारा सम लेवल में सर्टन अमाउंट नो यू शुड बी इजीली टू बी सैंक्शन फॉर repair or whatever even on the general insurance i'm telling so in all that while they are trying for insurance for all all that they must also look at their efficiency of service efficiency of delivery of uh, final product even maybe health may ye hi system hoga hal when you got all the health insurance in the when you go to the provider of the hospital and all wo to humne to god is great we have not experience but the point is that so in that way lot of things may have to be done to ensure that uh, uh, because another as you rightly said baad mein hamara question answer mein abhi sab batayenge bank insurance mein bhi ek problem hai bank policy sab bank sell karke provided while claim settlement or while getting getting the service if they don't get they will blame the banker only because the banker is the front they don't uh, you know the banks that's why miss tell miss selling ho gaya to even regulator will fi put fine so there are quite a lot of issues because one side is the positive aspect other side is the practical aspect so we have to all uh, do, do quite a lot of work in this area to make it uh, uh, reachable and see that inclusive insurance that is a very good uh, what you call policy aspect but that has to be done and uh, solvency also very important now as he rightly said after hearing the svb bank and other things 
today reserve bank also said the capital buffer so in uh, liberalizing and saying all others can also enter insurance but if you don't put uh, enough capital and the strength is not there that insurance cannot be a trust factor so we have to know that's why there can be a, a chance for consolidation in the insurance industry and getting more uh, capital buffer even in the, i think uh, public insurance companies they are thinking of consolidating because uh, all of the general insurance are not doing enough well so in this uh, opinion now if have any one of you have some questions please yeah any any speaker you can ask Uh, hello can i hear thank you mr singhania and the esteemed uh, executive committee and fmc uh, my question is to any of the sugar daddies uh, of the insurance companies so my family we were very um, very very happy with star insurance and um, whatever they promised they delivered but somehow this is a uh, a question which i have experienced and which we are all talking about in my groups uh, various groups uh, we had to port i our family ported the insurance to another company the primary reason being what was offered when we bought the policy as cashless the hospitals suddenly discontinued same thing is happening to the new company luckily when i saw the Uh, the email just recently that this has been delisted from the uh, you know list of hospitals first thing i opened and see was my preferred hospitals there or is that again delisted so this kind of a thing is um, happening and i have experienced that is one thing so if we are loyal to you your company anybody could be anyone is there some kind of an assurance that when we join you if you have promised this is there some way to sustain that at least till we hold the policy we will be ensured that that company we can use as cashless because it is important today cashless second thing i have noticed uh accidental insurances are now slowly picking up and i uh, wanted to again continue with star and they're giving a very nice policy but the the, the end result is that they're giving you the um claim only after like say if it's there a permanent disability whether there are other companies in the same sector which are taking slightly higher premiums and they covering things like fractures or you know day services opd services and all again when you look into the uh, nitty gritties you realize that if you have a policy of that company fractures will anyway be covered so you know the, the consumer how do we understand what we are actually going to buy because promises are made they made on paper also another thing i noticed when we ported we have a no claim bonus now when you port unfortunately you lose all your no claim bonus that is also again not fair to the consumer so shall we ask the you know bigger people like you or heads of so many companies to look into these things because consumer ke liye this is very big issue my mother at 82 has no claim bonus but we had to port because my physician visits those doctors where there was no cashless madam okay yeah, thank you yes yes because time is the uh, yes anybody would like to any i think uh, already uh, <laughs> we don't ask it that company wise but generally any other aspect yes general aspect uh singh sir which general batai i think uh, obviously all your points are very relevant from a customer's perspective um, and honestly I, i in some of the points i think we can only like to said about no claim bonus being ported i think that's something that can only be discussed and you know that generally seems fair from a if i was in your place i would also ask for the same thing uh, i think having said that hopefully the person who was porting your policy made it very clear to you upfront that no claim bonus will not be ported i mean i hope that was the case uh, but yeah i think that's a suggestion that that can be discussed i think on the hospital side uh, honestly i i would assume that from a insurance company's perspective in general they would like to maintain the same hospitals and the list that you are referring to is actually a very interesting challenge which i think it's very good that the insurance companies have come together which is that they have identified that these hospitals are somewhat rogue hospitals who uh, you know put in false claims etc now the problem with that i just want to explain to you is actually affects the genuine people see the fraudster affects the genuine person because the genuine persons 
both cost of uh, insurance goes up and the process becomes harder because now you know the company has no way of knowing which one is which so i think the hospital list again if i were to take your question i think is a more sensible thing to do and hopefully if your hospital from what i can understand would probably not be in that list is is my guess uh the first point that you maintain is i think an interesting thing that i think is an insurance company's decision because i'm sure they are evaluating various parameters before they decide and i would again venture to guess that they would like to maintain the list but there must be some special circumstances which would have forced them to not do that thank you singh so, pro probably the government can come with the regulator for hospitals yes. it can be a solution yes sir thank you sir thank you. yeah thank you, sir. Can I have... yeah one question no more than a question i am i would like to make a some observation or suggestion i could say yeah. so you are talking about the insurance fall by all 2047 almost all forums i am observing our uh, talk is only mainly confined to the metros or bigger cities yes whenever any natural calamity takes place whether it is a cyclone earthquake flood etc etc hardly 1% or even less than 1% are having the protection of insurance right i think definitely government or all uh, people like you should find some way how we can penetrate more particularly property and casualty insurance in the rural area rural this is important factor i thought of uh, bringing it to your uh, notice second thing now anand was mentioning 47% or some percentage of the vehicles 40, 40. Yeah, this is this we have been talking for the last 40 years the percentage is not changing Or it is going little up or down. They do the registration without the insurance. No, no. The, sir, no. We have work. to. We have to find some way how we can insure them, hmm. rather than only giving this percentage. In fact, I made an attempt when I was heading uh, United India Bangalore in two thousand three four to have tie up with the RTOs or police people. One thing is nobody will do anything for a social cause or anything. Only when they get some benefit, they will do it. i tried to have some agency tie up or something but that time there was no provision but now under the change regulation even some intermediary or something can be spent on this so we have to find some way how those people who are caused to ensure that these all vehicles are insured are adequately rewarded then definitely this 48% can be brought down so i want you to have some uh, uh, thought on this number 3 somebody was telling about the health insurance sir uh, to answer you her uh, question no claim bonus is transferred in a sense that much some insured suppose you are covered for 5 lakh and you are covered now next insurance for 10 lakh and you had say 2 lakhs is the no claim bonus or cumulative bonus to that extent out of 10 lakhs for 7 lakhs pd is covered if there is any claim of pd pre existing disease up to 7 lakh it is covered this is for our information of all yes sir that uh, as per the rural sector of other one he will answer the rural no, sector just, so it is only yeah. submission no no yeah affordability and awareness these are the and the compulsion if it is there yeah no i think it's a very valid point uh, which yeah. uh, mr naik has raised and this is also in the um, scanner of the regulator Okay, exactly what you said, right. and that is where these three Bs have been now floated. The three Bs, you know, I I, I call it three Bs. Good. First B is Bima Wahak. Now, Mr. Panda was the same person who propagated the business correspondent uh, system in the banking channel, where he went right up to the last mile, and the business correspondents were appointed, and they started doing business on behalf of the. Or, or representing the banks in the most rural part and getting those accounts opened and serviced. Similarly, what they are now suggesting and what is now being discussed and uh, which will come, I think, Dr. Prakash is on the committee of the life uh, non-life council, uh, and he is also part of the design part of it. So, Bima Wahak will be equivalent to business correspondent, and that is exactly what the government and the regulator is looking how to enter to the last mile in the most. you know uh, why tier 2 i'm talking of tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 and including villages okay so that's one part of it secondly i think at least to the best 70 years all the currents which is life have come together to come out with this product called bima vistar 
Vima Vista is a product which uh, combination of a product which will give you a life insurance cover, which is a term plan. It will give you certain units of health insurance, which is hospice cash uh, you know, uh, part of it. It will cover your uh, house uh, property. And maybe in the villages, your shops or whatever little dwelling you have where you do commercial activity of that. And including kettle, if it is possible for the companies to uh, look at that part. So it will be a combination of these products, which the, which the customer can choose based on what exactly his need is. And this product will be distributed by these Vahaks will be predominantly women driven distribution system in the villages. So more, more so it will be probably through self help groups and those kind of activities to create alternative methods of employment also through insurance. So this is one part of the part of it. To reply to what uh, Dr. Narendra said about motor claims is I think uh, I'm not sure when this accident happened, but off late I can tell you uh, most of the companies and I'm, I'm referring my restricting my uh, statement to the uh, private sector, not the public sector, because I don't have experience in that have come out with applications for the customers where you can take either a photograph or a video happening on the road on the spot. And that can be uploaded on the uh, company's uh, uh, system. There is an automatic thing which is evaluating what is the loss that Maybe is there. PSA insurance. Yeah. So so it is so it is evaluating what is the loss and it immediately comes and tells you what is the what is the settlement they are offering you. If you accept it, within the next minute the money gets transferred to your account. So you don't have to wait for unless and until it's a total loss where you have to knock off that vehicle completely. So that's on the motor OD side. I'm talking only from the own damage, not the third party part yes. of it. On the medical side, uh, I think we have to all thank uh, Dr. Prakash for the wonderful thing that he started on the star, which is now sort of a benchmark for all the others to look at. Uh, most of the companies, the large private insurers have gone in for an in-house TPA. Uh -huh. So they have moved out from the uh, out, out house or an outsourced type kind of a TPA to an in-house where what you said about six hours waiting period and all is completely reduced. And uh, I can definitely tell you that those times have come down to as provided, provided the doctor and the hospital charges are provided. Reasonable. Reasonable. Provided the uh, uh, charges are reasonable. Charges are reasonable. Absolutely. Nowadays, the bigger problem happens is the doctor doesn't ask you what are you suffering from. The first question he will ask you is, are you covered under Medi-Claim? And if you are covered under Medi-Claim, then obviously the rates are completely... Then obviously the rates are completely different. I've got one question to okay, so I completely second uh, no, no, Dr. I, Prakash I, I, that I want... instead of having some, I think we should... Uh, and, and sir, I would request uh, the IMC to make a representation to IRDA that... See, today you have member life. You have member lawn life. You must have a member health who will probably who will who will probably take care of these things and ensure. See, why does the insurance company hesitate to pay the uh, num, uh, the amount without clarifying the uh, rates which are there? Why doesn't the hospital see this was one of the suggestions which are given last time also? Just like you have hotels where you have one star, three star, five star, seven star. You have hospitals of that category, no problem. Depending upon what is the kind of uh, facilities you provide for the patients, you say, okay, I'm a five-star hospital and this is my rate. So all five-star hospitals will have similar, similar kind of rate, 5% plus minus. At least we insurers know that this hospital will charge X amount if the person is going there for treatment. A person goes for as low as appendicitis operation. If he's covered under Mediclaim, the charges go up to 160,000. If he's not, it is charged at 80,000 rupees. So what do you pay? You do you, do you pay 80,000, you pay 160,000. Now that we have, uh, Dr. Prakash has taken care of that. Yeah. So, so, so in that kind of a scenario, again, coming back to your question, how do you, how do you address this? Exactly what uh, Mr. Singh said. There are few people who try to take undue advantage of it, for which genuine people get impacted. But yes, sir, your motor case has been resolved. If it was with private company, you would have got it in 30 minutes. <laughs> no, I've got a question to Dr. Prakash. Only for, uh, Dr. Dr. Prakash, I've got a question to you. Sir, our other man is asking, sir. Question. Yeah, please. One minute. Wait. Yeah. Because now my time is over. Only this much. After that, uh, we'll again have and finally. Yeah. You are thinking of 
to get the car and no, but president is having one or two question yeah please is there any rule to attach the uh, uh, motor policy to your aadhar card and then to your fast track as an example if all this had been done for example you could have a better 48 percentage of people who are uninsured in this particular space is there anything going on in that space? okay yeah uh, there is a talk going on not a talk in fact this is what the insurance companies have gone back to the regulator because there was a talk happening as to how do we ensure uninsured vehicles to be insured so what we gave them is number one can see the only problem here in india is the enforceability of a rule is a big question you can have n number of rules rules are there but how do you enforce that rule and do you have an enforceable agency to enforce it number one okay number two our software is fantastic we know how to duck the rule and go ahead now what we told the ird and the government is that today you have fast track crossing every toll so even if you are even though i i came from andheri to this place i cross the a uh, worldly bandra worldly sea face so that fast track picked up that fast track should be connected to wahan portal which which has got the information of all the vehicles as per the government uh, thing if it is not insured it should not be allowed to pass through number one it you can also debit that premium amount for that and then allow allow it to pass number one number two we said can you start a scheme that if you don't have your vehicle insured we will not allow refueling of that uh, particular thing mm. number three whenever you do an any offense nowadays you have an electronic chalan which is that that so in the in electronic chalan you exactly know from the handheld device of the policeman what is the whether the particular vehicle is insured or not insured if it is not insured why don't you charge him 2000 rupees penalty for that mm. so if the if the insurance amount is only 500 and you have to pay 2000 he will definitely insure that vehicle no? the enforceability of the rule is a bigger question rules are there but i will try and see how i can not like for covid one year people did not take their vehicles out they did not insure the vehicle why why should i insure because if, now the new product is come which is called pay as you drive so you you are charged premium only for the period and the kilometers that you actually drive oh, the vehicle very, yeah. but this is only restricted to connected cars non connected cars we have still not got into it because this is still under experimentation stage of how this is going to actually behave so there are ways and means of doing it provided we are sufficiently and we can enforce that that say for example if you have not insured your vehicle hypothetically and you are on the road and you want to fill the petrol they they should not allow you to do that sir sir you mean you can drive i i just so want fast to fast track lanes itself sorry. actually speaking they could pick it up right from there telling you this is the car number us for example they actually do they don't need a fast track at all they actually use the car number to yeah but then us you have those gps systems here we still have not gone uh, to that, that level that will monitor that <coughs> so i i just want to make a small plug for policy bazaar we have pay as you go policies without any need for any connectivity so you can buy 2500 kilometers 5000 7500 10000 10, you have to give a photo of your odometer reading as proof and then later on if you cross 2500 you can buy more kilometers so we do offer a pay as you go policy uh, without connectivity we have uh, one or two question by the president i think from the audience it is over no you have one are sir aapka ek hi question sir abhi baad mein after the time is uh, your one question madam yeah your yeah yeah i will come back to sir. we haven't talked about it at all there's been no discussion so i would just like to raise this point you see when you talk uh, there was a report from the consumer affairs secretary that there is the number of cases pending in litigation in the consumer affairs, in the consumer courts half of them 50% of the cases are because of insurance claims which are not paid by insurance companies now what is irda doing about that <laughs> um i think i'll start and then probably uh, dr uh, prakash or sudhakar sir can take it out see it is not that we don't want to pay claims let me be very open and i think all my insurance colleagues will be and that is what we openly say we are in the business of settlement of claims provided it is a genuine claim okay i don't say that all are not genuine the ones which have not been settled are there is a difference between what have you bought what are the terms and conditions of that policy and what is the claim you are lodging for it 
if that claim is for example i'll give you a recent one which we fought out in the consumer court a guy had taken a policy to cover his stocks a trader had taken a policy to cover his stocks his stocks were loaded in this particular uh, premises and the premises that got burnt was the other one he wants us to pay that this policy for that loss which is there will you will you want to pay we said no then he is putting the blame on us that you guys have written a wrong address but what did you do to check the policy address when it came to you secondly on the life insurance because i have also worked on the life side there are so many disclosures which are required to be filled on a life insurance proposal form people don't disclose it but if it is a large claim we have to investigate if the death is within say 2 years we find out that you have not disclosed your things based on which if you had disclosed it we would have probably not given you the insurance so in that case if you still expect us to pay we will not pay because the idea of you taking insurance was not coverage the idea of you taking insurance was to take advantage of the insurance i'll give you another example we have this group policies for employees and the parents also can be covered in you know as in uh, as in when the company wants to give i can give you number of examples where if the where if the parent has to undergo a knee replacement operation exactly 6 months before they cover them and the moment it is over after 3 months so after the renewal they will be out of the scheme that means you came into the scheme only to take that advantage of 3 lakhs or 5 lakhs for that knee replacement we pay that but is that the right way to take insurance is 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 that the purpose of insurance no i'll give you a small example ma'am and this is a report again i i i was not in general insurance you know about the chennai floods yeah. chennai floods Flood. the total economic loss was 22400 crores as per a report the total claims that were submitted was less than 2000 crores that is the gap which people are not doing it in spite of having that gap if you ask people in chennai today they have not taken insurance for their houses so if there is one more similar kind of flood look at the kind of economic losses these guys have to bear and then you come up with so many take the case of crop sir was mentioning about crop insurance i do crop insurance we know what kind of problems we face half of them are fraud and we can prove it so your money a genuine person's money in an insurance pool is used by somebody else to have a false claim 50% you will definitely have i am not surprised at all how many of those 50% are genuine claims and today look at the kind of recourse you have for your grievance redressal you have an ombudsman where you don't have to pay anything you just go and uh, you know put up a case you don't even had to have a lawyer for it you have a district forum you have a state forum you have a national forum you have uh, uh, civil courts you have high courts everything see i mean i'll just give a perspective on this uh, you know uh, mr pejawar Uh, i mean if i have to look at the statistics then say in other markets uh, in us i mean i can give you an authentic report which says that such cases i mean insurance cases account for more than 70% of the total number of grievances by consumers so you know uk 70 to 80% but 40% is on missell which means the agents or someone or the other the intermediary may give a different impression about the product or together or misrepresent the product so you know to that extent i would say indian numbers are far more comfortable <laughs> you know compared to if it is if it is offering you any kind of comfort whatsoever but honestly i mean i've practiced in australia i've practiced in germany also in fact you know and madam i want to give you only one statistics i don't know how many of people you know in the two years of covid two years of covid and prakash sir please correct me if my number is wrong the total claims paid by non life insurance companies is more than 25000 crores nobody talks of this you know what is the meaning of 25000 crores all the 32 companies put together it is 3 years net profit of those companies and by the way when you took the policy there was no covid so that pandemic was not covered as per the original norm still added it was added subsequently look at it if 25000 crores was not paid what would have happened to people who were up on that level who neither could go to a municipal hospital 
nor were they in a physical uh, financial position to go into private hospitals and take even the reinsurance guys yeah not honoring all of that actually and hats off to the that time i was on the live side hats off to the general insurance and the uh, health insurance guys no questions asked you were suffering from covid just give a covid now i can tell you at least 5 to 10% of the covid certificates were false fabricated but still it, they have been paid but nobody talks of that nobody talks that 2 years 25000 crores was paid and financial assistance was given to the general public so in such situation only we will come to know the importance and significance of insurance cover that is the word yes madam one yeah. last question yeah yes uh, thank you very much it was really a great session i real uh, i recently bought insurance for myself uh, and i searched it through policy bazaar i took health insurance from star health i am a shareholder of lic oh. so <laughs> Um, uh, I represent TSS consultancy in this uh, particular. Hope you, know, you have a bank account with SBI. <laughs> SBI, yes, I have. My salary account is of SBI. <laughs> so having said that, um, I, I have a deep concern because on 1st of August, there came a regulatory guidelines which saw, spoke about CKYC, AML and risk compliance that has to be followed by general insurance and all type of insurance company which was prior uh, meant only after the claim it had to be taken up so once this came up uh, there were many actionable taken but uh, we found out as a company who are providing such kind of service that uh, many people went with the cost whoever is giving the lower price they took up with that so what does what does really matter like is any audit happening in future and how are you leveraging the opportunities? Like for us, when we see AML, there is debarred list of uh, doctors available in AML. So are you utilizing that? Are you using the CKYC list to do, do digital onboarding of your clients? So I think Paisa Bazaar is doing most of it, but how others are doing it? Because I, when I did my health insurance to Star Health also, there are a few challenges that were coming up for me. So if you would have used CKYC in one click, you would have got all my information. So I, I wanted to know how this is being leveraged and how you are looking at the opportunity of using vendors like us who are specialized in it uh, to help you out with it. Thank you. This also, uh, your regulator, our IRDA has got that, uh, this also CKYC and... Uh, yes, it's mandatory there. for ah, all the financial institutions that so includes... It must be there, just like uh, banking. Yeah. That, it's already uh, there. It's only a matter of leveraging the facilities yeah, that's correct. in front of them. Our uh, company, Track, which provides this uh, CKYC and anti-money laundering. Each company they must pay. Uh, that's why, uh, yeah. You yes, want any audit you're expecting in future and uh, are you working aggressively on meeting? Because it's a matter of trust, you see, and I'm concerned because... <laughs> you don't have to be worried because the rule says after issuance of the policy within 15 days, if you are not under CKYC, I have to upload your documents. Ah. Okay. Secondly, if you are holding a bank account and if the bank has already uploaded the details on CKYC, mm. and if you don't even have the number, not to worry, you have to just give the insurance company your PAN card number, not the card, PAN card number and date of birth. If these two fields are available, we can source your CKYC document automatically. Don't have to worry. Every company which is operating today under the regulation will take your CKYC. Yes, yes, no, want... Don't have to worry about your audit and all that. All auditors do that completely. Yes, yes. I want to, them to leverage this opportunity more. Ah, don't worry. Everybody is tied up with somebody or the other. I, I just want to, I think it's an excellent suggestion. I Since you all will be making some recommendations, I just want to say that intermediary should also be allowed to do this. Because if we were allowed to do this, you would have had a very seamless experience. Because right now we have to use the insurance company's CKYC service. And I think this, every other regulator has allowed their intermediaries to use it. SEBI allows its intermediaries. RBI allows its NBFCs to do it. I think IRDA should also allow. So please do request. Uh, uh, questions, one or two, concluding. Yeah. And after that... Uh, Thank you very much for the panel. I mean, some really interesting points have come across. I have a couple of quick points. Uh, to Mr. Pajawar, uh, you mentioned about an instant um, resolution for a damage on a vehicle. 
I just just an immediate question. If I'm the insured uh, vehicle, I won't really able to assess whether you're paying ten thousand or twenty thousand. Whether that will be the cost of repairs. So that was just uh, no. Just, see uh, what see what I mean by instances. You don't have to instantly come back. We will tell you based on what 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 yeah, is yeah, the yeah, damage yeah. because we have certain applications running behind which tell you we we also have the cost of the vehicles originally the uh, parts which are there. So it will tell you for this part, you, you get so much for this part, you get it so much. You say next day, okay, you can check with your uh, garage and say, okay, we pay them. Yeah, I think, I think my experience <coughs> also limited Absolutely. has been very positive. It's quite uh, seamless and uh, quick. Uh, so I think a lot of recommendations have come and I'll request uh, Dr. Narendra and the entire team to just sure. collate all these recommendations and we'll be happy to take it to the respective ministry. A couple of points, sir. One is that, you know, the government is very keen on rupee trade and extending rupee public services internationally. I think India being a low cost place for medical, if we can weave in international policies and if we target the, you know, Africa, we target the Southeast Asia, these people that you come to India and get medical treatment, sell them policies, maybe specific, not really international policy, but a policy governed for India, I think, and these people are anyway coming to India. So it will meet a couple of objectives. One is medical tourism. It will give us more, and they can, they don't have to come to metros. They can come to the smaller towns. It will give them, uh, you know, there will be tourism as well. There will be a lot of inbound tra uh, travel. So that's point number one. Secondly, I want to just mention that IMC is a seat of arbitration and mediation. They have an international arbitration center. Uh, and I would urge all insurance companies to kindly look at uh, institutional arbitration as a means of dispute resolution. So whether it is a genuine claim or a you know a non-genuine claim, the cost of uh, the cost and time spent by both the insured and the insurer would be limited. So that's one thing I'd like to suggest to you. We'd be happy to share with the panel. We have a set rules. We have arbitrated. Uh, we have a panel of arbitrators. We follow our rules and in a time-bound manner. That's number two. Lastly, uh, you know, you might, you all talked about awareness. So I think one of the suggestions I just thought of is that we already have a mandated CSR allocation. Whether we could use some of that money towards awareness. Maybe awareness in insurance, awareness in whatever areas we want to push. I mean, as a thing, because this money, if it can be used, because it will help. And, and lastly, you know, in terms of awareness for any of the topics, we also have a separate ERTF wing, which is the, um, you know, uh, research wing, which works very closely with SEBI, with uh, BSC, NCDX, MCX, and we have about two, three programs every month to a focus group to create awareness. So we did one on cotton futures, we do on, you know, various things. So I would urge all the panelists that please uh, take IMC as a platform. This can be done both physically and online. And now we are actually working with MCX. We are going from state to state and we are doing it uh, physical in other states as well. So I'd like to provide this platform to all of you that we can give. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, President Ji. Now, as a part of the uh, final thing, uh, we have Mayesh Thakkar, co-chairman, banking and NBFC and finance committee, as well as the, he is the director general of FIDC. So he will be giving you the concluding remarks and the vote of thanks. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Dr. Narendra. Thanks, uh, all of you. Of course, there is no time for concluding remark. I would wish Mr. Anand Pejavar to give concluding remarks, but he said he will sit with some of you people who have the questions. You can talk to him on a one-to-one -one level. Dear friends, it's great privilege, you know, to propose hearty word of thanks on this roundtable session, insurance for all by 2047. At the outset, let me thank first Sri Saurabh Mishra Ji, Joint Secretary to the Government of India, Ministry of Finance, who joined us and gave his valuable suggestions and also support in the future and take all the points which we have discussed today to the ministry level. A special thanks to Mr. Arijit Basu, who is not present today because he's traveling, he's the Chairman of the Banking and BFC and Finance Committee, Co-Chairman uh, Mr. Narendra, and very special thanks to Mr. Anand Pejavar, Actually, the entire organization of this <laughs> in a short notice of less than 10 days, he has done it and great work done by him and getting all the speakers around. Thanks to SBI General Insurance Company Limited for the sponsorship and 
the facilities which have been provided to you all people. Thanks to the press media who will be covering it in the media whenever we will send the press note to them. We will be sending the note to IRD and all the authorities that the president has stated and this discussion has been very healthy. Uh, uh, these people will be managing the personal meetings also with the authorities at Bombay and Delhi wherever required. Thanks to all the delegates for the lovely questions you had put, you know, more than questions. They're all experts in the field and they have given a lot of su suggestions and observations which will benefit all of us. And last but not the least to the IMC team, uh, Ajit, Sanjay, Bharti, etc., to have worked great for this seminar. But remember, the IMC Banking, NBFC and Finance Committee will have its flagship seminar, which is, you know, one of the biggest event in the city of Mumbai, which is coming up in May 2023, uh, around 12th May. Do attend that, participate in that. That will be a big event. And people from Ministry of Finance, Reserve Bank, everybody will be present. And all the sector in BFSI will be covered in that. And I invite you all of you to join them. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And before that, I request President to yeah. pass on the mementos to the speakers who are grateful to all uh, our speakers, particularly, of course, Arvind Daga earlier and Amit Choi. But uh, now our uh, uh, MIC, Sudhakar Sam, a very short note. Give him a big hand. And uh, Dr. Uh, S. Prakash also was kind enough to uh, come and, uh, in spite of his busy schedule, give him a big clap. Our uh, thanks and uh, our uh, acknowledgement to Sarbir Singh. Joint Group CEO, CEO Police Bazaar Sir, आपने हाँ बहुत अच्छा बात किया और इधर आगे हमारा प्रोग्राम को दिल्ली से आए थे वो बिग बिग क्लब देखिए और हमारा श्विल परिक at a very short notice I told him and he was kind enough to come and give a very good conclusion and real points so thank you sir yeah he said presentation also all of you would have enjoyed that i uh, sir our uh, ashwin pari yes unko And uh, great thanks to Mr. Anand Pejawar and uh, Deputy Managing Director and good friend and our committee member. <laughs> All program is due to him only. Yes. I hope so. And thanks to all the audience, both on virtual as well as physical. Yeah, last photo. Hi. They photo. Sir, sir, up your photo nikaling. All in our record, no, in the website also it will go. Yeah, please. Gracias.